What's up, everybody? This is Derek Kirby back with another Mavericks post-game show. The Mavericks got themselves a big win on Dirk Jersey retirement night, beating the Warriors 99-82. to Now, this is an incredible win for the team. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the game itself because, obviously, the newsworthy thing, while the game was a very pleasant outcome, is Dirk's Jersey retirement. But the game is the Mavericks' fourth win in a row. They are up to fifth in the Western Conference. But the real key has been the defensive turnaround over the last month. The Mavericks' defensive rating now, I think Mark Followell had the tweet earlier, is up to sixth in the NBA. They held the Warriors to their lowest point total on the season and are now 11-3 when holding their opponent under 11 points. They've done it 14 times in 38 games. Last year, in 72 games, they held their opponents under 114 times. They were 14-0 in that one. So doing it way more frequently. But you see how this team, obviously in the NBA today, if you're holding a team under 100 points, regardless of who it is, you're going to be in pretty good shape. But it's pretty impressive that for the Mavericks, they've held their opponents under 100 in their last five games. Five straight games doing it. Three times now, their last three, holding them under 90, including the Warriors, the best record in the NBA. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's the most straight games that the Mavericks have held an opponent under 100 in the Luka Doncic era. And you know what? The weird thing about this game is they win by 17 without even really playing that well offensively. There's no one you really look at their production and you say like, Oh, man, he he worked it tonight. Wow, that sounds weird. Uh, it, you don't look at it and say, like, man, he was in his bag tonight. He tore it up. We'll, we'll get into that. The Mavericks as a team shot 38% and won this game by 17 against the best record in the NBA. They shot 30% from three, just 12 of 40. They did do a, a good job hanging on to the ball, 12 turnovers, 22 assists. They tied in the rebounding department, although they won the offensive glass 10 to 8. And they blocked five shots. That's nice. But what's weird to me is the fact that on a night where Steph Curry starts one of ten from the field, has five points at the half, you found yourself saying with an 11-point cushion at the half, like, dude, they need to be blowing them out right now. They need to be up much more because this is too tight for how this is going. At the half, the Warriors didn't have 40 points. Ridiculous. The Mavericks had a 21-7 to run to close out the first half and yet and yet and yet curry goes five of 24 from the field like i know he's been slumping lately i do and i'm pulling up the stats here again just to confirm his figures five of 24 one of nine from three uh 14 points nine assists five uh, excuse me nine rebounds five assists for Curry in 36 minutes. And he's banged up. He'll miss a little bit of time probably now. Again, further delaying the Steph Clay reunion. But really weird that in a game where Curry is that bad, and it didn't matter that the Mavericks offense was that bad because the Warriors offense was dreadful. And Curry being the engine for that was huge. The Warriors as a team, 41%. From three, 18%. Five of 28 like, not good. They turned it over 16 times. Just a rough night for Golden State. And it worked out because Dallas gets its probably best quality win of the of the season at this point, I would say. And fitting that it comes on Dirk Jersey retirement night. So moving on now, let's get real quick into the Dirk Jersey retirement. The pomp and pageantry around this was kind of... It was... So close to being on the cusp of overdone, the 41-piece orchestra set really, really like set the tone early. And you got all the, the smoke and the lasers. You know, they put a, a thing out there on the court to cover the, the logo at center court, but then they used a projection light thing to kind of give you that blue ring around the stage. You have not just the jersey, but you have, as you can see in the picture there, uh... A, not even a replica because the thing's not built yet. You have a basically like model, a prototype of what the eventual Dirk statue will look like. And they, it's not enough just to do the jersey, which was an incredibly 
amazing moment. But it's like, hey, let's go beyond that and let's fixate on unveiling this statue, which I guess Dirk has seen before. But usually the way you do statues is you don't show everybody what it's going to look like. Like, you do the ceremony, it's covered up, and then you rip it off and everyone, including Dirk, sees it for the first time. They're just like, <gasps> and they're like all oh, just breathing it in at once. The full-size statue, not a, not a prototype. And you got all the flash bulbs going if it's, you know, the 90s and all of that. You don't have that here. Instead, you get, you know, a sheet's there, but they take off the sheet. And it's like, oh, okay. And Mark Cuban's already foreshadowing future plans beyond the AAAC. That's been kind of a thing that's been out there that they're probably going to be leaving the AAAC in the near future, which is the house that Dirk built. That's a shame. Dirk obviously played at the end of Reunion Arena, the previous arena. And uh, this is the house that Dirk built. So the fact that the Mavericks are already talking about, hey, this statue will be outside this arena and the next arena and the next arena is kind of one of those things where you're like, hmm, all right. But for all the pomp and pageantry of this night, it's all to honor the greatest Maverick in franchise history. One of the most humble superstars in any sport really that i i've ever seen like dirk legitimately is my favorite athlete of all time not just because i grew up watching him and my consciousness as what uh watching basketball in the nba resonated with i think the it was the 0203 season so dirk would have already been you know kind of scratching at the cusp of real real stardom that season was their 60 win season uh, with Nash and Finley, and they went to the Western Conference Finals and lost to the Spurs in six. But it wasn't just the timing of it. It's just the way he carried himself. You never you never felt embarrassed with Dirk Nowitzki as your franchise's superstar. He was so humble, so likable, talked to anybody and like appreciated anyone in the franchise, anyone that wanted a photo with him, whatever. If you watch this old, and this dates the hell out of this reference, but, and this was the early 2000s, uh, an MTV prank show, Punked, one of the bits they had, they had Dirk on there, and it's obviously not something where it's a planned thing for Dirk, but some guy keeps walking up to his table while he's eating lunch with a friend, and just keeps asking him for his autograph, and he's like getting him to sign more and more ridiculous stuff. It's not just a photo or a piece of paper. It's like, here's a baseball. Here's a football here's my yearbook. Like, it, it's, it progressively gets more and more ridiculous. The guy has to go to, like, the seventh or eighth or ninth item of just absolute absurdity before Dirk finally says, like, D dude, no, I'm trying to have this lunch here with my friend. Obviously, the friend's in on the prank. I'm trying to have this meal with my friend here. Like, I, I've, I've done enough. <laughs> but, like, the people even said after the fact, they're like, man, we kept pushing and pushing and we could not believe how patient and like approachable he was still being after all this time. We were almost wondering like, are we not going to be able to use this footage? Is he not going to eventually tell us no? But eventually even Dirk had a limit there and he didn't even blow up at the guy. He just was kind of like direct, like, no, dude, I, you got you got what you, what you needed. Um, I'm going to go back to my meal here. Uh, you know, have a good one. Awesome, awesome thing. Just kind of shows, and that was early in his career too, but it shows just how humble and uh, approachable he is. So aside from the fact that the statue to be has what looks like anal beads on top of it, uh, I don't know what the hell that's about. I've heard mixed answers, everything from like, oh, it's trying to show the trajectory of the ball leaving his hands. Because, you know, he had a high arcing shot on his fadeaway. Okay. Do people looking at a statue with a single basketball in his hand not understand that? And if you're trying to convey the ball leaving his hand, it's not like his hand stays there and then the ball's coming up. There's an extension and a follow through. So like, what is it you're trying to convey there? What is it you're trying to... I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. It looks ridiculous. And they should they should uh, just take like a hacksaw and just cut off the top part. I almost feel like this mini unveiling, and I guess you don't even have to put quotations, it is a mini statue. Uh, this unveiling 
almost as much as anything feels like just their way of showing like a concept to the public to gauge feedback. And the fact that it was a game on ESPN meant they had a national audience. Like, hey, let's see what everyone thinks of this. Ooh, okay, not very popular. It kind of reminds me of Mark Cuban when the Mavericks won their title, Mark Cuban overthinking things, thinking he's being like, oh, I'm so forward thinking and visionary. And it's just like, you don't need to complicate this. No one looks at the Michael Jordan statue outside the Chicago Bulls arena and says like, oh, he's only holding one basketball. What's that? No, he's doing the jump man pose. He's doing his iconic pose. Dirk's got his pose right here. The rest of the statue is fine. I, I honestly think it could be better. Maybe the three balls are just distracting from that. But Dirk's got three balls in his hand, cut off the top two balls. He only needs to be holding one ball. That is not a sentence I thought I would say today. But it is what it is. So that's one thing people have said. I don't get it. I don't like the idea of it. You're just overcomplicating. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cuban after the, the title was like, ah, championship rings. You know, they're cliche. They're played out. <laughs> we'll get championship bracelets. Someone asked Dirk that because it was during the Mavericks, like, victory lap with media tours and stuff. Someone asked Dirk about it, and Dirk's like, what did he say? No, we're going to have a conversation. We're doing rings. We're not doing a championship bracelet. I didn't play at that point 13 years of my professional NBA career for a bracelet. You chase rings, not bracelets. So, like, that's that sort of thing. This is what it feels like. Cuban saying, like, ah, it's not enough just to have a statue. I need to be, like, really outside the box, almost, like, experimental with it. Like, dude, and, and an idea I heard said on uh, 105.3 The Fan this morning that's actually cool. Again, Cuban being Mr. Forward Thinking. Uh, mix the physical statue holding one ball with, uh, like, a projection thing you've seen how they can overlay like all these animated graphics that just look incredible onto the court to like play out this whole scene we saw it in the 41 21 one ceremony dirk's last home game uh, a couple years ago same thing do that with it if you want to show the trajectory of dirk's shot literally set up something next to the statue that is projecting the extension dirk rising up out of the statue to shoot his shot run it every 30 seconds minute whatever that would be really cool, and that would get people talking. But then, guess what? Even when the thing wasn't turned on, meaning like during, anytime not during a Mavericks game, then it just looks like a normal statue and not the borderline sex toy. <laughs> like, stop it. Stop overthinking it. Just have the statue. But even still, Dirk apparently saw the statue when it was, uh, when this prototype was being built. And said he liked it, so uh, I, I don't just take take a hacksaw to the top part of the two basketballs and make it look normal. But it's it is what it is. It it is a really cool moment. The ceremony itself. I know I've been complaining a lot here, inventing. The ceremony itself is great. Dirk talked for about twenty minutes on the mic. I could listen to him tell stories for hours on end. Dirk is so humble and gracious. He's thanking everybody, not just the former teammates and people like coaches and people directly affiliated with him, not just the Nelsons, Donnie and Don, not just Carlisle or Cuban or anything like that, but like literally people who just helped him like adjust to life in the United States. Like people are telling him how to get, how to rent a car, how to set up all of this stuff. Cause he came over just as a young kid and didn't really know how to function here. And so, like, he's thanking people that just helped him get by early on and kind of adapt and adjust to this new life. And, like, that is really cool that he always remembered those people's names and, like, made sure in his, like, biggest ceremonial moment to date, uh, you know, the greatest of his career, the only thing left would be the statue being unveiled at Mavericks opening night next season to shout them out specifically. And multiple times at that, he looped back to the person, the woman, uh, Kim something, I thought that was so cool. Like, it just shows his character. But you get all the... A bunch of the 2011 title team was there. Not all of them. You had uh, Tyson. You had Karan Butler, who actually couldn't play during the playoff run because of he'd blown out his patella tendon uh, in January of that year in Milwaukee. But he was the second best player on that Mavericks team. That'd be like... I, I know, saying, like, Mavericks losing Porzingis. You're like, <gasps> gasp, I never would have guessed. But, like... If Porzingis went down and then Luca still led the Mavericks to a championship. Like, yeah, 
that that's pretty incredible. The Mavericks had no other All Stars, not even an All Star teammate for Dirk. They had one superstar, and he beat the first artificial super team in NBA history. That's incredible. So, all of this stuff, it's all so deserved. I loved that, like, Dirk's kids, they still don't really understand it. They don't have the context of it. They're young enough that, like, they kind of look bored during the ceremony. Like, why is everybody making such a big deal about dad? All right, he was a good basketball player, whatever. I, it's, it was great seeing Dirk and his family. Holger was there, of course. Um, really, really cool. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was all up in my feels, my sports feels, last night watching it. And, uh, God, I missed the hell out of watching Dirk Nowitzki play. I really do. Dude is, to me, he's the GOAT. And it's not it's not a matter of like actually being the greatest basketball player ever. But to me, as a person, you can't find anyone who will say a bad thing about Dirk Nowitzki. You just can't. Um and that's, that's really special. It speaks so much to who he is as a person. And I think it's why, as a kid, I resonate, like I gravitated towards him and he resonated with me so much. And I think it's why I admired him so much growing up and what made me a lifelong Mavericks fan and not just a, uh, a fan of them for a few years and kind of like from afar. Like that's what made me adopt a favorite NBA team was Dirk. So really cool stuff. But that's all the time I got here for this video. If you haven't already, drop a like, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and I'll be back with more great content here in the coming days. Remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!